channeling Eric's Hour of Enlightenment. Hello, everyone. This is Lisa, Maggie, and Eric's mom. And we have the wonderful Michelle Gray. Let's see Hello. Yes, arts.com. Hi there, Michelle. Hello. And hi, Eric. How, how are you? I love you. Hi, Mom. I love you. Love you so much. And, and he was just responding. We were talking a couple of minutes ago there, and he said that you guys were working real hard today. He's oh got God, like his, um, he's oh. got his tank top on, like he's <laughs> taking his tank top off, like he's got to change his shirt. He's oh my God! Put on I know. a different shirt because he got all dirty. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, it was a tough day today. Sometimes you get that where the scalar work you you're doing is just super hard and and yeah. tedious and taxing and draining. Mm-hmm. But anyway, that's what I live for. So. Uh, mm-hmm. I want to remind you guys that uh, in the description box, uh, on the YouTube description box, you will see a link to to subscribe to the newsletter for Atlantis Scalar. Please do that because we have all sorts of cool things like science coming up that I input into the uh, intent scripts and sales and cool deals. I never do spammy type of stuff, so please click on that link. All right, so, and also subscribe and share and hit the notification bell. Give me a thumbs up, blah, blah, blah. I don't care about likes. If you Either you like it or you don't, but if you want to like it, fine. <laughs> All right, and we are going to t- talk about, I think, one of the most important issues is self-love. That mm-hmm. is so important for healing, prevention of disease, mental, mm-hmm. emotional, physical, et cetera, and also just you know how to be happy in life, but I will let the mm-hmm. expert lead the way. Eric, tell yes. us what you know. He's he's got the mic and he is ready to go. He says hi everybody, and uh, he said <laughs> he's like gather round, gather round, everybody gather Aww. around. Here, listen up, listen up, because he says this is the number one thing on the list that most people are struggling with right now. Oh, God, and yes. he says, you know, everyone is going through whatever it is that's on your plate right now, whatever it yeah. is that, you know, is on your heart, or whether it be grief or struggling through a situation, a job loss, a change, whatever that is, he says, self-love and compassion for yourself is so important. But he says it's also really misunderstood. So oh. it doesn't. He says it doesn't always get, um, say, the credit because he says if you think about what self-love means to you, and he goes, really, everybody, like, what does it mean to you? When when we're saying self-love and self-compassion, what do you think of? What does it mean to you? Does it mean that you want to go have a really nice bubble bath and take care of yourself? Because that's fine. That's a good thing, and that's a good thing for you. But he goes, let's go a little bit deeper. Because he says something that he he brought forward, and Alisa, you and I talk about this too with with self love and with the scalar healing and with helping everybody and how this is so necessary to help you in your healing process. But he right. says you have to want to be your best cheerleader, your best friend, and you have to be on your side. And to be so much on your side that you won't let anything else take away that love or shake you. He goes, that's how bad that you need to have this for yourself. But he says, here's the problem. Self-compassion or having compassion for yourself has been taught to many people as something negative. As something that, you know, um, being compassionate for yourself maybe looks like it's self-pity or... It can look like, um, you know, if I have compassion for myself, am, am I being uh, kind of full of myself? Uh, it's not always been taught as something you should always put others first. Do for others first. And he says, uh, how many of you will, you know, have your plate full? You do everything to the best of your ability. You're running around for other people. You're doing things. You're volunteering you're taking care of absolutely everything, but at the end of the day, you're not sleeping well. You've yeah. got problems with your stomach. 
He says, you're not digesting food well. You've got headaches. You've got depression. He says, and one of the biggest reasons that is is because that self-compassion and self-love has been cut off. Yeah. Because you're giving and you don't know how to out. digest the beauty of life. Yes. For yourself love. That's yeah. it. That's it, Mom. That's exactly it. So he says, so keep in mind, he says, self-compassion is not feeling sorry for yourself. It's not pity. He goes, it's acceptance and it's understanding. So he says, so here's a way to think about it. Think about a person in your life that you're really close with, that you absolutely adore, that you love, whether it be your best friend or family member, whomever it is, just think about that person. And now think about that person hurting. Think about that yeah. person outdoing themselves, doing too much, um, going through hard times. What do you say to that person? What yeah. do you say to them? What kind of, what kind of thoughts? What kind of words? What, what do you reach out to do? And he goes, because here's your key. If you want to find out what your self-love is and compassion looks like, you take those words and those acts towards that person you love, and now you turn it around and you do that to you. Yeah. You do that to yourself. He's like, how do you speak to yourself? How do you treat yourself? He says, because the other thing is, too, is that a lot of us walk around thinking we can't let ourselves off the hook. That if we let ourselves off the hook, then that's giving permission maybe for something we're feeling guilt for or something oh. that we've not been able to let go of. So he says, you know, this is the path of acceptance and accepting wherever things are at. And he says, and accepting that imperfection is absolutely part of the human path. He says, not one of you incarnated here onto this earth and said, okay, I'm going to walk this path and everything is going to be easy peasy. It's going to be smooth sailing. I'm and not going to have a bump perfect. in the road. I'm not going to make anything. Right. That's yeah. right. He goes, none of you said that. He goes, you know what you said? You said, oh, hey, I'm going to make a mistake here, and I bet you I'll probably make a mistake there. And, hey, you over there, you're going to incarnate over here with me. Would you help me out if this situation comes? And then we'll see how we can, like, get through this. And it's going to be really exciting because what we're going to feel with making it through it is going to be amazing. So he says really turn around that thought of how you're looking at your life and realize that the imperfection is actually the beauty. It is right. the beauty I mean, in your life. Yeah, failures, failure, mistakes, there are stepping stones to success. They're all teachable moments. And you should worry oh, if, you're, if you're perfect or at least you think you are. It's, you know, and also put your own oxygen mask on first because if you don't love yourself, how are you going to really be able to be your all for those that you really love and care about? And and that's exactly it, because Eric says, you know, at the end of the day, if you're not able to do that for yourself, then you're not able to give fully of yourself right. elsewhere, because there's parts of you that will be held back. And he says, and suffering, because a lot of us will judge ourselves based on the suffering that we have. And he says, and suffering is okay, but we, we feel and we hurt. And he says, yeah. and that's okay, but remember that, you know, we can go through suffering and can we be that friend to ourselves to say, I don't need to suffer alone. I don't need to go through this alone and look for ways to reach out and understand that for different reasons and different feelings, but everybody does suffer at some point of their life. And of course. we can join together to be able to get through things. And he says we can feel it and we can share it together. But he yeah. says that, you know, the other thing is, too, is like the why. What, why is this so important? Well, he goes, this is how. And, Mom, you said this. You said this in the beginning. He says this creates positive, good vibes, good feeling, expands yeah. your vibration. He goes, Anna helps you good in the world because everything has a polarity. There's an opposite to everything. And, right. and we have that within ourselves. And he says, so you get a choice in every single moment 
of every day of where you want to put that focus, where you want to take those actions. So he says, you know, this allows you to have a better vantage point, to have a bigger view. And that comes from expanding your vibration. But it also, it helps your authenticity. It helps you make choices that are really authentic to you. It helps in your relationships and all your interactions. He's like, the list goes on and on. Like, this is what helps you in absolutely everything. Helps your healing path. And most of all, it will give you peace. And a sense right. of peace that so many of us desire. Yeah, and with that expanded vibration, with, with self-love, then you could sort of look at your life from 30,000 feet like a, mm-hmm. a chess player moving the chess pieces around instead of the victim falling victim right. and, and just being moved, pom, being a palm piece that's moved from square to square. And, and also at 30,000 feet, you can look at mm-hmm. your mistake and say, hmm, let me see what kind of teachable moment that is. What can I learn from yeah. that? And then when you exactly. realize it, you have gratitude for it and you let it go. That's right. That's ex- that's exactly it. And, and he says that this is a um, – like uh, mental health, he says. So oh, yeah. It, yeah. people yeah. that have more compassion for themselves, that practice more compassion, have better outcomes with mental health. So true. So it's, so true. Says it's, a, it's a great prescription. And less physical disease as well. Yeah. Eric, what kind of physical yeah. diseases are very common in those who are self-loathing and in and, and the victim mentality um he says stomach gut problems mm. um digestive um kidneys uh liver mm. heart arthritis he goes uh, any type of inflammation and arthritis because yeah. you're fine um, your inflammation is attacking yourself so that makes mm-hmm. total sense wow mm-hmm mm-hmm and he and he says um, the um, uh, oh gosh what is it called Eric um, <laughs> why am I seeing it the um, oh getting sick what am I trying to say here um, oh help me Eric put the words in my mouth um, you know we're we're sick I feel like he's robbed it right out of my mouth like when we're yeah, sick right. our um, our Protection from being sick. What can I use the word? Oh, immunity. Immunity. Yes. Oh, my God. He's showing oh. me the colors of the chakras going up and down. I'm like, what's the word? What's the word? Yeah. <laughs> immunity. Your immunity. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I yes. feel such a relief that we found that word out. That's good. I know. I know. So, yeah, your, your, um, your immunity, he says it helps protect you. So right. it's like a, a barrier there to help protect you from disease yeah it mm-hmm. all makes such you know that's like giving yourself a, a immunity it's like giving yourself a, a, a lovey a blanket to show yourself self-love so it, it all just it makes is. sense in so many ways yeah yeah and and eric says well and what's the the basis of it you know why and where does it come from because as we say many times we are, we are from God. We are a part of God. And yeah, we are God part of God. Love. So not to love. Yeah. We actually That's are right. energy of love. So why not we, love yourself? We truly are. We truly are. And he says, and so if you think about this, he goes, well, you're, you're God. You are a projected part of God in the physical body. And mm-hmm. as Eric has said, you're God in the body. And yeah. so with, with that, he says, You love source. You know that love. You feel that love from source. Well, Mm -hmm. that is you. And so by loving you, you're also loving source. It's all the same. So it's got tons of benefits for you. (laughs) Yeah. I I talk a lot to the people I'm, uh, the person I'm working on in the scalar field, and I talk to them about self-love. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, I read the script a million times, but... um, and some of y'all's names are really hard to pronounce, by the way, but it's kind of fun. Uh, but um, I lost my train of thought. Um, oh, yeah, and I, I talk about how 
you and you alone have absolute sovereignty over your energy. True. Nobody can access your energy without your permission. So reclaim that. And here in life, we have peers, parents, siblings, teachers that rob us of that without our permission. And they tell us what mm-hmm. we're doing wrong and how we're not perfect mm-hmm. and all that stuff. And that's, you know, one of the things where self-loathing originates from. So, you know, mm-hmm. it's really important. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's exactly right. And like Eric says, all the experiences throughout our life, you know, when we're with our self-esteem and, you know, going through from a child, school, um, breakups, divorces, oh, yeah. uh, job yeah. loss, all of these things that hit these levels of self-esteem um, can really make us so critical of ourselves. Oh, yeah. But that critical eye is through the eye of somebody that's projecting towards you. Like our experiences, Eric says, when somebody tells us that we are a certain way that is not true and we accept that into our energy, we're accepting somebody else's version of us. And nobody else can truly know the truth of you, your version. They're just projecting their shit onto you, he says. (laughs) (laughs) That is true. Okay, you want to take callers, Ben? He is ready as he'll ever be, he says. I don't know why some have the holding hands up there. And then it looks like the whole time either. two more minutes. So I'm going to go with the people that have waited the longest and move on from there. So we have somebody from the 732 area code. Hi there, how you doing? Are you there? Hello, 732 area code, you hear me? Okay, we'll go back to that person later. Now we'll try the 702 area code. Hi there, how you doing? Hey, how you doing? Can you hear me? Yes. How are you? Hey, this is I'm good. This is Jim from Las Vegas. How are you guys doing? Hey, Jim. How you doing? Jim. This I'm is good. we're talking about 30,000 feet, right? <laughs> I think about <laughs> you when I say that, so. Right. Hey, um, I have a question. I'm thinking about moving somewhere, and I'm talking about out of the United States because I've been researching other countries. Just wondering if Eric has any insight on the place that might be good for me. Mm. Well, first thing Eric says is warm. Warm. Yeah, I don't do cold. Being warm. <laughs> yeah. He says being warm. Is there any... Um, chance that you're thinking about moving to be near somebody? No, I'm pretty much a loner. I don't, I don't even know anybody overseas anymore. I was okay. in the Navy for a okay. long time, and I've, and I've traveled all over the place, all over uh, okay. Western Pacific. So I'm thinking about the other direction, Europe. Oh well, what's interesting is um, Eric says, you know, there's a couple couple locations that you're going to come across, and he did show me over in that direction, but he's going towards the warmth. So, um, and I don't know that area of the world very well, but he's going over near water, near an island, wow. near water, and it's somewhere that oh, really? you've been before, Jim. Oh. Oh, really? Oh. Or somewhere you, you're familiar with in some way. Like Greek but island, he, Crete, something. Uh, mm. Yeah, I looked up. Greece, but I've never been there. I, like I said, I've been over like Hawaii, the Philippines, all that. Oh, yeah. First, right. You know, the desert over there, <clears throat> UAE and all that. But Oh, yeah. One thing, one thing he's saying to you is because he says, you know, there's going to be a couple places that you're going to start investigating a little closer, and you may go and visit um, before, you, before you go and move there. But he says um, – Take your time with this. Mm-hmm. Take your time right. with this, and and really settle settle yourself into it. What he does say, and why I asked you if there was somebody that, you know, you were going to meet or going to if it involved somebody else, because he's showing me that there's a connection, that there's a friendship. Oh, there's something through this oh, really? where there's mm-hmm. some kind of a friendship. Yeah, yeah. So he says there's a little more to it. So he says, but just take your time and feel into it. Um, okay. He also he also says um, 
if we're talking about compassion today, he says that's something he really wants you to, to hear and to listen to, go having compassion for yourself. Okay. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Thanks, Jim. Thanks, wow. Jim. I'm excited to where he's going to go. All right. Let's try to get this 732 area code person. One more try. Hi there. Hi. How are you? There you are. There. Okay. We tried to get you, but we didn't hear anything. So but I thought you would come back and get out. What's going Thank on? You so much. Thank you for waiting. This was. This is Melissa from Thomas River. Okay. And I, and I don't have anything specific, uh, but, I, but I'm but i open to anything Eric has to tell me. Ooh, brave girl. <laughs> okay. Let's see what Eric's got to share with you today. Um, are you connected to music in some way? Yes, yeah, so I'm a professional singer. Well, trying to be any. <laughs> I mean, I've been singing for years at church. So I do weddings and funerals, but I'm trying to do other things as well. Okay. Well, what Eric is saying is he says music is an absolutely beautiful part of your purpose here. Mm. And there's a lot of healing because he's showing me the throat chakra. And there's a lot of healing that comes through the vibration of your vocal cords for people. Um, And, hey, just to keep on the theme of things, he also says, that the compassion is a big thing for you too, for yourself. What a beautiful thing to say. Thank you, Eric. <laughs> you bet. Mm-hmm. Oh, I want to hear you sing, but we won't put you on the spot. All right, thanks, okay, thank you. Have a great thank night. You. Beautiful. Take you care. Too. Oh, my goodness. I wish I could sing. All right, got somebody from the 515 area code. Hi there. How you doing? Hi, good. How are you? Good. Lisa from Iowa. Hey, Lisa. Hey, I've been down all day long with stomach pains for the last oh, two days, no. describing mm. exactly what you're talking about tonight. Oh, it's mm. horrible. Oh, Eric, mm. what have you got to tell her? Can you help her? Um, is there some kind of a a relationship change that you've had, Lisa, or something? No, not really. Um, I mean, I'm frustrated. Mm. Okay. With family. <laughs> oh, God. You know, the whole thing about saying, like trying to do what? something good for myself and healthy, I, I keep running into hurdles because I'm constantly mm. helping. Or getting lost. Because what he's, oh. he's, he's showing me, um, like he, he's connecting the health to – um, he says a, a relationship, but he also says um, there's some resistance in there. So part of your stomach stuff is the energy of resistance and just some changes. So he says what he wants you to do is just after this conversation, he says, like, just kind of ask and ask what are, you know, what are the signs or what, what can you show me? What kind of changes do I need to make? Because he says your guides are giving you signs of things that you can change um, to help you feel better. And Good. it's probably a little more detail to go into off of the, off the, yeah. you know, off the radio show, but he's also saying um, it's connected to you having more pride in yourself too. Well, it sounds like pride, you arrogant. I mean, I'm getting like frustrated with people really easily. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and it, he, he says you hold on to, other people's stuff. Like, so there's some resistance in there carrying some oh. other people's stuff. So there's yeah, some, some shedding. There's there's some changes coming for you. He says, watch okay. for the signs. Good or bad? Oh, change is always good. It might not always be comfortable, but change oh, is good. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Well, I, yeah. well, thanks for calling. She probably needs to have a longer session with one of the meetings. Yeah, your your I'm tummy problems are gonna feel better too. Tomorrow you're gonna feel a lot better. Oh, that's awesome. Eric Helper, yeah. healer. All right, got somebody yeah. from the zero nine area code. Hi there, how you doing? Anybody home? Six zero nine area code. 
Hello, can you hear me? Oh, there you are. Good. Hi there. How are you doing? Uh, thank you. Doing well. Thank you so much. Uh, my name is Marina, and I'm calling from Germany right now. Uh, I would like uh, Eric to help me to find my mom who passed away three and a half months ago. Uh, yeah. And we miss her very much. Um, yeah, and uh, I just wanted to feel her, uh, to sense her, and maybe Eric can help my mom to find my mom and to help her and she's to be Valentina? around to Valentina? make her also sensible. Known. Yes. yes. She's Valentina, but also and everybody knows her Valentina. Allah, right? Because we've been emailing each other. Right. Yeah. Right. Yes. Well, yes. Exactly. Sorry, what's, mom, what's mom's name? Her name Mom, on her passport uh, name is Valentina. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Correct. Yes, Valentina. Yeah, yeah. You're Valentina. absolutely right. Mm-hmm. Valentina. Yes. Okay. On passport. Okay. okay. But maybe she will uh, She will answer when she will be called Allah. It's her lovely name. She's here. She wants she's very here. much to be called as Allah. Oh. Yeah, no, she's. She's what here. She um, as you're as you're talking, so she's coming right through my heart chakra. As she's oh. coming forward, she wants to let you know first of all that she has complete freedom. So it's really important that she tells Thank you God. that she is free. But she's also saying to you, um, like this is a happy ending for her. She wants to tell you that she's free, that she's okay. But she's saying to you to have courage, like the rest of the family, to have courage. To continue Thank forward you. with courage. And, uh, how can I sense her? I would like to have her around. Okay. And how can okay. I? Okay. Can she materialize herself a little bit so that we can sense yes. her? Yes. So what she's saying, um, what she would like you to do is to practice being able, because the reason why she came through the heart so strong is she says that that is where she connects to you is right in the heart like oh. right in the memory of the heart so yeah. what she would like you to do is if you can take a little time make a little bit of quiet time to connect with her each day and ask her to let you feel her in your heart and you're going to start to feel just like a warmth like a presence of warmth and you'll you can continue to work on that to feel her more but you'll start to notice when you call on her, you'll start to feel that sensation. You start to feel yeah, that. It coming. might not happen right away. You know, it takes no, you gotta, she says you got to work on it because there's, there's a few things that might make it a little bit challenging right now. So she's asking you to be patient with it and, and to continue to ask for it because you will feel it. Keep doing it and you will feel her. I thank what you she, so much. How was thank her death? Him. And thank you to Eric. Was his was her death peaceful? Eric? Uh, or was it was, she says she says my my body pain? my bo- my body was in pain. She talks about her body uh-huh. being pained. Um, but she says that leaving the body was complete freedom. Oh. And she says that's the very first thing she felt was being received in complete freedom. And she's also giving me the color as completely yellow, like just like gold, like oh. yellow. Yeah. Very beautiful. Nice. No, sounds like a beautiful soul. The, she those is, are the ones we miss the most. <laughs> yeah. She loves her family. She loves you guys mm-hmm. very much. All right, Marina. Marina. So much. Yeah. Well, She's still around. She just doesn't have a body. There's not that much difference, and she's not suffering anymore. Uh, the, but the, you know, call call the, again the, from time to time. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Thanks, you sweetie. Your thing. Go ahead. You can you can finish your sentence, sweetheart. So you're Marina, you want to say something yes. else? No, I, I just wanted to say uh, thank you for all of you, and of course, thanks to Eric to bring my mom into the call, and it is great what she's saying, this is exactly like her, and I'm so glad 
oh, I was able oh, good. to speak a little. Well, could oh, you good. please, uh, can you see here, can you see here, uh, what shape does she have? Well, how is she looking like? Uh, the, what I can see is I can see legs. Um, so I've seen from the knees down because um, she's moving her legs. So I don't, was she not walking at the end of her life or had challenges walking? And um, she doesn't yes, seem like a very, very big woman. Like her stature no, seems she, she, kind of smaller. Yeah. She, she becomes smaller. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. I don't well, see Marina, her she, in. Yeah, mm -hmm. you don't see it. Maybe, she probably can't manifest her entire body quite yet, but no, she will. Little, little glimpses. She gives me little flashes, little glimpses. Mm -hmm. All right, Marina, mm -hmm. thanks for calling. Call back, okay? okay. Oh, thank, thank you. Marina. Have a great night. Thank you so much. You too. She must have been, I mean, she obviously was so sorely missed. She must have been something else. Gosh. Yeah, oh, okay. the patriarch of the family is very, oh. very strong. She showed oh. me the root, like the oh. root to the family. Yeah. Oh, Michelle calling me. Yeah. Michelle, my daughter. Uh, all right, let's yeah. take somebody <laughs> from the 775 area code while I text Michelle to hold off. Oh, hang on. Seven, seven, five, Hello? Hello? Hi. Hello? Hi. Hello? Hi there. How are you Hi. doing? Hi. Hi. My name is Denise. I'm from Nevada. You know Nevada? Yeah. Hi, Hi Denise. Denise. Nevada. Hi. Um, I uh, just recently got diagnosed with uh, skin cancer. Mm -hmm. and, um um, um, one second. Claudia, come deal with the dog, please. I'm on the phone. <laughs> is it squamous cell or basal cell or melanoma? It's, it's basal skin cancer and squamous, squamous skin cancer. You have two types? Yes, I have two types. Have they biopsied it to figure out? How, yeah, uh, yeah, I did a biopsy, yeah. but I'm just now getting ready to make the appointment. Um, and I have to get the most surgery the on yeah. with a basal yeah. cancer. Yeah. And, um, and then the squamous, they're just going to cut into it, a diamond shape around it. Right. Um, and But the, the thing that scared me the most is the basal, they have to take layer by layer. And so they don't see any more cancer, and then they'll figure out how to repair the nose. No, <laughs> and that really freaked me out. I've had that, I've had that I've had before. before. I've had that before. It's, it's not super bad. As long as you go to a Mohs surgical expert, it's really important. So what do you want to ask Eric, baby? Okay. Um, well, I, that was the start of it. But um, also my mother passed away in um a couple of days before um, before Halloween, and we haven't dealt with the property. She died here in Nevada, and um, we had to go back to California. Um, and um, and I got the skin cancer biopsy. But what do you see in the way of my mom's mobile home? Cause I'm, um, and put the skin cancer in my near future. Well, Eric just wants to tell you right away that um, like Denise, you're gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay. He says that, you know, the the process of going through this is it, it's not easy. And he says that he knows that there's some fear there, but he said that you're gonna get through this. He says the challenge. Take what you're learning from this inside. He says because you're gonna get through it. And he talks about your nose and saying um, it's not gonna be as bad as what you're imagining. Um, oh, that's he says good. that like your mind is taking you to places that it, it's not going to be. So he says, do your best to keep looking at. Okay, they're going to do this. They're going to take care of it, and it's going to be easy. He says, yeah, there's going to be a little scar there and stuff. But he also says the doctors that you're working with are real good, and your mom is also right there with you oh. to help you through this. Oh, I feel it right now. I feel it right now. Oh, and I, yes. we have to go. Like I just got the call before I talked to you that that my oldest son is going to be there there on Friday, and um, and my dad made it so that we were the mobile home would come to my sister and I, 
And What's that? Yeah. Then I wanted him to take power of attorney and he took over the whole thing and they, they did a will, uh, did their own will saying that my mom only had me, my sister doesn't even exist. So oh. I want to know what he sees in the future of, are they, are they just really trying to rip me off? And, Cause I had some mental problems when I was there with her. I lived with her for five and a half years. She had Alzheimer's and then we brought her to Nevada, um, in August, September, and she died in October. So now, um, I don't have the paperwork saying that we are joint owners. My son has it in my mom's safe in at his house. And but so I don't think anybody even knows she died in California. And we've been paying the rent through her checking account. And I ha my name's on that and everything. But the paperwork saying there's joint custody coming to my sister's, my sister and I upon her death. Um, how, is, how do you see that working out? Well, Eric says that, that, like you know, weekend. one of the biggest lessons, one of the biggest lessons right now is about relationships, but about communication and about the relationships in your family. He says just, now I know this is kind of a hard thing to say, but he's like surrender, like don't get too caught up in the details, communicate, be honest, communicate, and your relationship, there's a lot of help, like he says, angelic assistance. A lot oh. of help from above can help you work through this. So he yeah, said just take you, one step at a time. What I know about communication mm -hmm. is that yeah. you know, people in this situation are usually very afraid of communicating to like their siblings, et cetera, about something like this because mm -hmm. they're afraid about what they're going to hear. Don't be. Mm -hmm. Be honest and, 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 you know, kind and all that. And just, you know, be authentic. That's People right. Will find That's the most people. important thing. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for having me. Be honest. Yeah. Yep. Be thank honest you very much for taking the call. Thank you. you bet. Thank you for calling. Okay. Got somebody from the 209 area code. Hi there. How you doing? Good. How are you? Good. What's your name and where are you coming from? This is Stacy from California. What's your first name? Stacy. Oh, Stacy. Yes. Okay. Of course, Stacy. Hi. What you got for us? Hi. Um, I have been having some really great meditations and um, working on my chakras and stuff. And I just wanted to see if you can, Eric, can tell me which one needs the most work. Oh, that's a okay. great question. That is a very good question. Okay, let's see here. I know that ten out of my seven need work. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> it's the new map. Well, he says he says that right now, um, it's actually your third eye, and your third eye and your crown chakra. And he says working with your spiritual connection. Um, he says because what your higher self is helping you with right now is with clarity, to have more clarity, and. Your body has done, um, like your your root chakra and your sacral chakra has had a lot of repair to it in the last little while. Um, yeah, I, little I feel bit, it. You feel it, yeah. It's you crazy. should feel it. That's awesome. It's, it's actually you. moving pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, there's a little bit yeah. of work in your uh, solar plexus area, but the most of it is in your in your third eye, and it's it's timing. Um, Eric says, as you heal, you know you start to work more into like it's not linear, so it doesn't go like one, two, three, four, but it kind of goes back and forth, and you do layers. So ah. he said there's a, a layer ready to peel off in that third eye mm -hmm. area. So a uh, little meditation. Um, he says uh, even um, like some vibrational work like um, uh, making sounds with the vibration. I, I can't remember what the one is for the third eye, but you can Google that and look it up. There's some different yeah, sounds you can use. Oh, yeah. yeah. But um, no, yeah, good sometimes work, good when job. I listen, sometimes when I listen to it, I could actually feel it. You know, um, my solar yeah. plexus is the one I always get like a, like a, it's not a pain, but it's definitely a yeah. feeling in there. So, like yeah, I'm like, you need to work on that one. Yeah, well, and it's it's strong for you too, right? Like, there's a lot of 
a lot connected there for you. And you're going to yeah. really find this year is a real boost. Like you're going to have more clarity and feel really good in this year. Like keep doing what you're doing. Keep going forward. I, I decided, you're doing really well. Thank you. I've decided this year is about me. I've always I awesome. started having kids at 19. And I'm, yeah. like, I'm gonna love myself, and I'm gonna come first. Self love, yeah. baby. Uh, Self love, baby. Awesome. That is awesome. You're, you're, that is you're awesome. That sounds so good. You are a yeah. perfect mother for everybody on this call and the viewers that will listen to this afterwards. So good for you. That's right. Yeah. Proud of you. Yeah. Congratulations. Girl. That's awesome, Susie. <sighs> Thank you so I need much. To, I need you to learn from you too. All right, thanks, Stacy. <laughs> All right, we got somebody I love that. from. I know it's so good. That's hard work, yeah, man. So, it is. And we have somebody from the eight one eight area code. Hi there. How you doing? Hi, Mama. This hey. is Shelly from Los Angeles. I actually hey, I, was like, I didn't even push one. I thought you had to push one to get into the queue. I was just listening, but I guess Eric has a message Ooh. for me. <laughs> well, what's it, Eric? Tell Shelly what she needs to hear. Okay, he says. He says to you, first of all, he says, you can do anything that you put your mind to. And so you're showing me like a few floating ideas in your head, a couple things you have in your head that maybe you might not think you can do or aren't part of your reality because he's just saying, if you put in the work and you put the push anything that you want to do. So is there something? Oh, he's talking spiritually. Spiritually, oh. and I just said, "What do you mean, like spirit?" So, are you like, are you um, like a reader or a medium? Yes. Yeah. Oh, so very cool. So um, and he's giving you giving you a little nudge, Shelley. Okay. Like, okay. <laughs> like, yeah, like, I'm like working on some is. really important things, and I it is yes. intimidating. Yeah. You know, he says that it's part it because. Okay, he's getting awful excited. So he's working oh, with thank you. you. Like you know, you know Pardon? he's working with you. He he's working with you. So yes. he's what you're okay. doing. He's working with you, and he's also saying like this wouldn't be happening if it weren't part of your experience. Like meant to happen. You're manifesting it. You're doing it. So he says you're going through the steps of bringing it into reality. So he's like just keep discipline. Keep your mindset on it. Keep going forward. You can and do don't it. don't be afraid to no. push yourself outside of the envelope. You know, I feel like maybe some of that's going on. Like, it is intimidating to put yourself mm-hmm. out there in this kind of field. Um, mm-hmm. But the world needs more people like you, man. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. You bet, Kelly. You're welcome. Well, a Have lot of excitement here. Oh, my God. Oh, I think she's I know. Oh, gosh. All right. Five, one, six, area code. We might be able to get to almost everybody today. That's so cool. I'd love that. Hello? Area code. Hi there. How you doing? Hi, Elisa. Hi, Michelle. Hey. Hello. I love you guys. Love Who is this? You. I, I know your voice. Nancy, Nancy, Nancy oh, from Long Island. Nancy. Nancy. <laughs> it's been a while, yes. I love you guys so much. Thank you, Elisa, for all you do. You don't know oh. how much you're changing people for the better. Oh. Thank you so much. And I share Thank your you. YouTube. I share, yeah, I share, I share a lot. I have mm-hmm. a question for Eric. I have a very, very close family member of mine that went for MRI, but it's mm-hmm. very concerning. I think the next step will be a biopsy. That person is very scared, and me, God knows, I already have so much on my back. I don't know how much I can take. Oh. So I don't know. Like I was asking Eric, is it gonna be that? So they didn't do the biopsy yet. So you know, I don't know. Is this? Um, did you say where this cancer was located? Does this have anything to do with it? Um, they don't with say head? yet, but he just the result of the MRI. He's like the prostate. Oh. Um, oh, the, okay. uh, the period is the period four. So they said it could be. It could be that. Wait, where, so they don't know is, yet. Wait, where is the spot they're going to biopsy? What part of the body? Um, prostate. The faucet. 
What? What? Yes, four steps. Yes. How do you spell that? Un four step. B four step. Oh, yes, I, I kept yes. thinking he was doing four steps. Oh, jeez, I'm sorry. Oh, my no, mind. Four, 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 I, yes. I, I thought sorry. it was. Sorry. No, 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 it? that's okay. It's a prostate. Yes. Oh, the prostate. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. All right. Hang on right here. Hey, he's got, you know, he's got a bit of a road ahead of him. Um, he's, there might be his, he's got, he's got a little bit of a road ahead of him because what Eric is saying is like is perseverance. Um, and, and there is a, there's a contract here with partnership, like with, mm-hmm. with love with somebody as well. Um, mm-hmm. and, and some of that is what's coming up because there is a, like Eric's showing me, um, it's what will come about because of this. So there is something there. There is something there, and he's going to need some kind of treatment and, and some care. Um, Eric says it, but it's really that that energy in this partnership that there's like a healing taking place. But, um, he says it's the completion of a cycle. It doesn't mean the completion of his life. It's a completion mm-hmm. of a cycle. So yeah. maybe when when that relationship heals, then that will help him get better. Possibly. Yeah, there's um, there's also there's some financial healing too. Mhm. To come up as well, um, mm-hmm. because some of that is part of it too. So mm-hmm. Eric says it's it's you know it's up to them because they kind of it's up to their will of how they walk through this of of how it you know, how the healing goes and everything. Um, Eric says any energy healing, if they're open to any healing, scalar work, anything like that will be helpful for them. But um, mm-hmm. there, there's something there, and there might be just a little bit of spread too. Oh, my God. I don't know how much I can take. Oh, my God, oh, guys. It's, it's okay, though. It's okay because he's okay. got a lot of spiritual support. He's going to be okay. He's going to be okay. Remember, Eric, you know, him? like they told Eric is helping. Eric is helping. Good. And, you know, they told me that my cancer, they didn't think it was going to be cured, mm-hmm. you know. And, and Rob. It, it's, it's scary. And Rob, my husband was diagnosed with with uh, what they thought was stage four. And mm-hmm. he's now Lovely. clear and going for checkup. Mm-hmm. So it is, it is possible. And that's, you hold that faith because these lessons are, they're huge lessons. And they're tough, but there could be miracles all wound up into all of this. Oh, so this is an opportunity for a lot of healing for them. All right, okay. Nancy, we're gonna we're gonna pray for you and him. We sure are. And, yeah. and keep calling back and checking in with us every once in a while. Yeah, please do. Oh. And um, the microbiome optimization really helped Rob with his cancer a lot. Yeah, absolutely. All right. We got the 845 area code. Hi there. How you doing? Anybody home? 845 area code. Hi. Hello? Okay, we'll get back to them because I hear them. I hear them. All right, we got the 757 area code. Hi there. How you doing? Good evening, Michelle. Good morning. Good evening. I'm Mama Lisa. Hi. This Hello. is Sandra from Virginia Beach. Oh yes, Hello. I, um, yes, yes. I'm glad to hear you all. Um, I wasn't present in a couple of your last um, sessions, but today I felt the like need <laughs> to listen. It was very important topic for me about the safe life. I know mm-hmm. why it was Eric was pushing me. Uh, I have a question to Eric. Um, if he has any advice for me to navigate the changes in my life, to better navigate the changes in my life and anything like he wants to share with me about right now, about this moment. Okay. Well, you know, the first thing that Eric is saying is he says, you know, one of the biggest things is, is trust because he says that sometimes when we go to try to find all the answers to get through something, we start to forget about the moment that we're in. Oh, yeah. And he says the very best thing to do to navigate with changes 
when when we feel overwhelmed or we're not sure which way to turn is to actually be as present as possible as we can with ourselves. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that maybe isn't giving like a, well, what do I do next? But Eric says, actually, the lesson for you is about letting go of needing to know what is next. Oh. And being as present as possible with yourself. Because by doing that, he says, that's going to help reveal to you what it is that you need to know. And that's really what you're being pushed to do. And sometimes we think, well, we have to take action. We have to take action. But really, a lot of the times when there's just so much and we just don't know where to turn, it's about being. And that's exactly what he says is the best oh, way that feels to so navigate right. for you. That mm-hmm. feels so right. Mm-hmm. All right, we'll try that, what sweetheart. I want to ask, yeah, a, a thank, quick, thank you for calling. I want to ask about my the housekeeper, which is really our family member, the, the one that found Eric, mm-hmm. Maria, mm-hmm. having epigastric yeah. pit, pit of her stomach radiating to her back. I'm just hoping it's not anything bad, like pancreatic cancer. I mean, tell me what it is. It's getting worked up, so. She has gastritis already, and she has a lot of family drama now, which is creating a lot of stress. But she's losing yeah, weight. No, it's not. It's not. Eric says no to cancer. No, good. not That's cancer. All no. Um, but but he is showing like, um, well, you know, everything that we're talking about tonight with compassion, and everything because he's pointing into her stomach and like showing everything in knots like everything's in knots inside oh, yeah. of her okay i know her family you know um, she's, she's yeah. a rock and everybody's falling apart around her yeah and she needs yeah. to have self-love you're right all right uh, i don't yeah. want to take too much time we've got a couple of it but we have somebody from the 318 area code hi there how you doing no way thanks for being patient <laughs> i'm here yes i'm here what you got <gasps> for us Oh my goodness! Am I really on? No, yes. I just think I'm going to imagination. Hey, <laughs> oh my gosh, y'all! No, no, no! Listen to me. I've been listening to y'all forever, and I just earlier when one of the callers said pressing one to get in the queue, I never knew. Are and I'm like, that, I didn't know that that you no, had to do I, that. I never knew. I, I didn't know I that didn't, either. I didn't either. She said you pressed uh, something about pressing one, and I went. Oh my gosh! I've been doing this all this time, and I never oh my God. knew. I've got, to, I've, got to, I've got to make sure that people oh know. Oh my that. gosh! Oh, thank you. Oh, oh I'm you. so pleased. I'm so pleased yeah. to maybe be talking that's what, to y'all. Alisa, maybe that's what the hand is. Huh? Maybe oh, what? Maybe that's what that hand is. Uh, oh, that's what okay. the hand is. The hand. Yeah, oh, that's funny. See, and I'm on my <laughs> cell phone, so I don't see your hands. So, but um, I'm so pleased to be speaking to y'all. I have been listening for so long, and it's Thank very you, interesting. Mom. And um, my 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 son left abruptly in May, um, and he just you know he just didn't wake up. He was 41, and mm. he he told his sister she's kind of gifted. He told his sister that it was like he was hit by lightning, and then mm. he was. But he would have said expired because he was funny about stuff. But oh. um, can I hear from him? Of course, baby. Absolutely. What's his name? His name is Trevor, T-R-E-B-O-R. It is Robert spelled backwards, and he loved telling people that. Uh, <laughs> so it's Trevor with a B. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, with a Trevor. B, not a V. Trevor. It's Trevor. Yeah, and he's a heat. So, yes, he is. Yes, he is a hoot. And like he is, <laughs> he is, he is not stepping in. Let me tell you, he is bouncing in. Like I know it. He I is, know it. Yeah, oh. he is bouncing in. He's like, hey, mom. Hey. Oh. Hey, mom. Yeah. Oh, uh, hi, baby. He's he's doing real good. Um, he's got his hat on backwards. Like you yeah, I'm like hat around. a hoodie, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, real, real cozy. He says. He goes, oh yeah, mm-hmm. real cozy, like always. Mm-hmm. Um, he says, mm-hmm. he goes, you know, all I did, mom, is just take a time out from the physical. Just took oh. a time out. Took yeah. a time out. Um, what does that mean? Mm-hmm. From, I don't, 
I mean, I get, I mean, like, he's he already back. Like, like when he said, no, <clears throat> he just means, like, that this life is okay. so quick. It's so quick. It's like a, I took a time out. Um, no, he's actually, okay. he's a, he's a pretty, pretty busy guy already in spirit. Wow. Um, yeah. Yeah. He says, uh, he says he's got big plans. Um, now you said his sister, uh, is gifted, can communicate because, um, he says, mm-hmm. yeah. And, um, like he's got plans with her. He's like, got what? plans really? with her. Yeah, yes, and he wants to write a book with her. <gasps> no way. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. That's mm-hmm. like, that's like oh Matthew God. with a Matthew book. Matthew mm-hmm. and his mom. That would be so mm-hmm. cool. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. She's yeah, going he, um, he's, he's got a lot to say. Um, he's okay. already learned so much. Um, he's oh, talking yeah. about, like, um, he's learned so much about judgment and about fear and um, he says, like, about denial and how to keep going forward and healing and all of these things. He says he's very excited. He knows Eric. Um, you've known Eric That's before really- his passing. But he says Eric came to him. Eric came wow. to him. Wow. Mm-hmm. You, you know, well, oh, yeah. Eric has punked me before, so. Wow. Anyway. Yeah. So- I've been listening yeah. for a while. So, yeah, yeah, he totally yeah. did that. Yeah, so, he came, um, he came anyway. to him. Um, but he is so excited. He He's very proud of you. And I have to tell you, his message to everybody is to keep going, to keep keep trucking, keep going. Oh, like, Trevor, you're he amazing. Keep moving. Um, he says that he's still the heartbeat of the family. He's still, like, beating everybody's heart. He's still in there. Oh, so he wants, right. wants you all to know that. So maybe can I ask should, a quick another question, real quick? Yeah, maybe sure. you should have your Get, daughter. I want call to in know if he and talk to him. Yeah, yeah, I know. I should do that. I would totally would do that. And yeah. I tell her to press one. <laughs> Get the key. <cute. laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, it was um, so. I recently got married to a man well, that, that I. Thank you and. I want to know if Trevor made that happen. Yeah. He says, you Trevor, know it. Oh, you, you know, know it. it. You know it. You know it. it. <laughs> yes. Yes. Cool. I was like, yes. that guy's busy already. This is so, oh, yes, that was he amazing. Is. He is, and he, he just says, he just, it adds just his sleeves rolling up. Wait till you see what else he's got planned. Oh, my <gasps> God. Okay, I'm gonna- I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take one more caller if I can. Um, there was one that I missed, but they didn't answer, so I hate that. But we got one more, and that's from the 910 area code. I almost got everybody, though, so don't give up, people. It's Belinda from North Carolina. Belinda, I've missed you. What is going on with you? I haven't heard from you forever. I know. I, I listen to the show. I just have it. I feel like I need to let other callers go. <laughs> no, it's okay. Oh. Well, and uh, this is my cobbler friend. <laughs> yes. No, so that's uh, Deb, you, the one from Kentucky, I believe. I'm the oh. cool whip for the cobbler. Oh, you're a cool whip. Okay. So. Cool whip. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 whatever yeah. Sure. I'm off sugar, so I'll take whatever you got. Um. <laughs> What what question do you have? Um, my brother was diagnosed with stage four uh, COPD, and he's going into surgery for his shoulder. But with the COPD, I feel like he's given up, and I'd really like to receive a message from our mom to make him have a little bit of hope or anything. That he doesn't we give up. Pick, we got, we got, we're, we're going into the other show. So real quick, Eric, uh, we can't um, hear from the mom. Well, just say one, one just thing. A, just real quick, just let him know that he's not alone and that the relationships are the most important thing right now. And to take those people that are with you, tell him and hold on to them real tight. Close your eyes and mom's going to be right there holding his hand. No. It's going to be okay. 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 
Thank you. All right, thank you, you Linda. And all you guys, thank you for listening. Thank you, Eric and Michelle. I love you guys. And I love you listeners out there. Be sure you check out Michelle at thehealingh-art.com. And all this will be in the description box. Bye-bye. Love you. Bye, everybody. Love you.